Good morning. Thank you, Chris, for that uh, wonderful introduction. I am so honored and privileged to be here to talk to you, and I want to thank Southern California Edison for inviting me back so that I can share my family story, this incredible lineage, this blood that runs through my veins. As Chris introduced me, did he say I'm the great, great, great grandson of Frederick Douglass? And he said the great, great grandson of Booker T. Washington. Not only is it a mouthful trying to spit all those greats out, but it sometimes makes me feel very far removed. And you may be having a hard time trying to imagine what my connection is to these two historical giants. It's like trying to picture what a billion dollars looks like with all those zeros. I heard billion. <laughs> But I bet everybody in here knows or knew your grandparents. And just by a show of hands, how many of you know or knew your great-grandparents? So just about the whole room. Well, that's how close I feel to both Frederick Douglass and to Booker T. Washington, because you see, my great-grandmother, whom I was very close to, she actually met Frederick Douglass when she was a little girl. She lived to be 101 years old. She lived well into my 20s. And my Aunt Portia, whom I was also very close to, she lived to be 95 years old. She was Booker T. Washington's daughter. And I remember being a little boy and sitting on my great-grandmother Fanny Douglas's lap, and she would tell me what it was like to meet, and she called him the man with the great big white hair. <laughs> and I remember sitting on my Aunt Portia's lap, and she would tell me about her father, Booker T. Washington. So when I stopped to think, that hands that actually touched the great Frederick Douglass and hands that touched the great Booker T. Washington also touch mine. In a sense, I can say that I stand just one person away from that history. We're not that far removed from our history. I have the privilege of traveling around the country and talking in the past three years to more than 50,000 students, mostly in economically challenged areas. And they think this history happened so long ago, and that slavery happened so long ago. But when I talk about my family, and I talk about just being one person removed, one generation really removed, and we talk about knowing from where you came, because you need to know from where you came in order to know where you're going. And I truly believe that our young people who are in trouble, who feel that they don't have any hope, when they're forming their identities, if they knew that they descended from great people that made a difference, that they descend from people that fought and died just for their right to sit in a classroom and get an education, and that they stand on the shoulders of those that came before them, I truly believe that if they had this information when they're forming their identities, then they would have more respect for themselves. They'd have more respect for their peers, and they certainly wouldn't be disrespecting those that came before them. Now, I often get the question, how is it you're related to Frederick Douglass and Booker T. Washington when they weren't related to each other? Good question. <laughs> well, here's how it happened. Now, when I was growing up, I certainly knew that I descended from these great men, but I never told people about it because the few times that I did, nobody ever believed me. And I, I just never felt that it was a point worth arguing. But today I'm going to tell you how the two families came together. My grandfather, Frederick Douglass III, was Frederick Douglass' great-grandson. Uh, great My grandmother, Nettie Hancock Washington, was Booker T. Washington's granddaughter. The two of them met at Tuskegee in 1940. They were walking across campus, and they literally bumped into each other, didn't know that the other descended from an historic family, it was love at first sight, and they were married three months later. <laughs> and when my mom was born, Nettie Washington Douglas, she was the first person to unite the bloodlines of these two historical families. She was an only child, so I have the honor and privilege of being the first male to unite the bloodlines of these families. So that's how the two families collided, as we like to say. And history lives in each of us. It doesn't just live in me because I descend from two people that we've heard of that are famous, 
but history lives in all of us. I guarantee that if you go back and look at your family tree, you would find people that made a difference and shoulders that you stand upon. Yes, history lives in each of us, but the future depends on how we carry that forth because we are the sons and daughters. We are the grandsons and granddaughters. We're the products of slavery and we're the products of the abolition of slavery. From Frederick Douglass, we learned that we have a right to be free. And from Booker T. Washington, we learned how to make our way in the world as free citizens. And from Martin Luther King Jr., we learned that as free citizens, we have the same rights as all citizens. When I was growing up, the challenges faced by great men like Frederick Douglass and Booker T. Washington were apparent to me because it just so happens their blood runs through my veins. But the fact is, all of us, we live far from the cotton fields. And we're worried more today about who's going to win the Super Bowl on Sunday than we are about the threat of being beaten by our overseers. We live in modern times and the echoes of slavery are hard to hear from where we stand. But if we all listen close enough, we'll hear cries and not echoes from the slaves of today. We're, we'll hear cries and not echoes from our young people that need inspiration and need hope. And when we listen to that, that's when change will happen. Last February, I was in Washington, D.C. at the Frederick Douglass National Historic Site. It's the home where he spent the last 17 years of his life. And I was celebrating his birthday on February 14th. And by the way, he didn't know when he was born. There were no records. They were like property. They're like sheep, cattle, pigs. And he chose February 14th because his mother used to call him her little Valentine. And I was speaking to the group, and a young girl who was probably about 10 years old, she asked me a question. She said, Mr. Morris, what must it be like to walk in the shoes of Frederick Douglass and Booker T. Washington? And I thought, man, that is a deep question. And it reminded me of being a little boy in Washington, which was where I was born. And we used to go on field trips to the Frederick Douglass National Historic Site. And upstairs in his bedroom, on his bed, is his nightshirt. And next to the bed on the chair is his hat. And on the floor is a pair of his shoes. And you know how when you go into a museum, they always have that velvet rope that blocks off the room so you can't get in? I remember being a little boy, and I always wanted to sneak past that velvet rope <laughs> to try those shoes on. And this day in February, they actually took us on a VIP tour, and they took down the rope. And they brought, there's a group of about 20 or 25 of us into this room, and it's a little room, so we were crammed, you know, shoulder to shoulder, kind of like we're sitting down here today. <laughs> and we're, we're crammed shoulder to shoulder and you know where they put me? right next to the shoes and I looked down and I said there they are all I would have to do is just slip off my shoes and nobody would ever know and I could just step right into them but I never did I never tried those shoes on because I knew that they wouldn't fit. Those shoes are too big for any of us to fit in. But what I realized at that moment is, is that I can take the shoes that I've got, and you all can take the shoes that you've got, and we can lead the way to a brighter future. We can lead the way to a better tomorrow. And each and every one of us can make the difference in the lives of those around us and in doing so, just like Frederick Douglass and Booker T. Washington, go on to affect the lives of millions and millions of people. Thank you for listening, and God bless.